Network. Notre Dame alum getting ready for uh, Clemson this week. How about that? But we call it the, <laughs> but you had the uh, USC at Arizona game this week. You got Arizona at Utah. So you've been getting some really good games. And uh, Arizona kind of gave USC a little bit of a uh, headache there for a little bit, didn't they? Yeah, well, yeah, they did. And listen, guys, everybody in the Pac-12 this week needs to be a Notre Dame fan because somebody has to be Clemson. Yes, yeah. you're right. And, some, and somebody has to be TCU. So for the Pac-12 champion – to have a real shot to get in the playoffs. Uh, you really want Notre Dame to win this, there? I gotta say this, Teddy. You're right. It's you're absolutely right. Interesting. When you look at the, uh, you know, the, the how far the Pac-12 has come from last summer, right? Here you got, you got five teams in the top 25 in the CFP, two in the top 10, that being Oregon and USC. Uh, a little bit of a change of mode from a lot of the, uh, the the pundits out there all over the national speak. Oh God, it's so much better. It's so much better this year. And it's the quarterbacks, guys. It's, it's mm-hmm. you know, Manuch, come on, you know, it's Absolutely. the quarterbacks. And, it's all about and, the QB Ted. Play, yeah, the play is so much better. The Wildcats are a huge example of that. The lore has been, you know, for the most part, been really good. ASU's, you know, scuffled a bit. Now they're asking, you know, a guy that's a walk on. It's a great story, but that's not the plan of attack when you're at ASU. But that's that's a, that's an exception in the conference this year. It's more of Delora and, of course, the key guys being uh, rising at Utah, Nick at Oregon, and Caleb Williams at USC. They have elevated this conference dramatically. I think Nick's has been – they've both been exceptional. It's not a negative. Nick's mastery of an offense in his first year to me has blown me away. I, I just had no – clue and remember they lost the 3,000 yard running back and Travis Dye who went yes. to USC right Oregon lost that guy and they still their offense has scored 40 points you know every week after week one and I think Ted what's interesting what you just said there uh, potential Heisman candidates quarterbacks in the same conference and it's not all about the SEC about the quarterbacks or receivers or whomever that are in that same conversation that could be in the top five I'm just kind of prognosticating is how this these last three games play out. Yeah, amen. And that's, that's what frustrates me, guys. And just a uh, you know, short background, I, I declined invitations to both of the Heisman for many years because, you know, you're, you're, you're in the pack. You don't see everybody around the country. But the bias against mm-hmm. athletes from the West was so intense. Yes. And it really crystallized to me when Toby Gerhardt didn't win it and then Andrew Luck didn't win it. Now, Andrew Luck lost to a couple of really, or finished second, I should say, to a couple of really good players. That's, that's not knocking them. But it was just such a bias against athletes from this part of the country that, that I jumped in. And, and that's where I absolutely think that the, you, you have to be, in my view, 25% better as a player out here. Caleb Williams at USC. They have elevated this conference dramatically. So, speaking of Bo Nix, do you think he's inching closer into that, maybe the top five of the Heisman race now if he continues to play like this? Well, I, I broke my, uh, my moratorium. I'm a Heisman voter, yeah, okay. and I won't talk about it until November 1st, because I just don't think it's right. Uh, but now um, yeah, he's absolutely on my radar, okay. and he would be right now a slight edge in my view very very slight edge on Caleb Williams coming out of the pack I just think Nix has been they've both been exceptional it's not a negative Nix's mastery of an offense in his first year to me has blown me away I I just had no clue and remember they lost the 3,000 yard running back and Travis Dye who went to USC right Oregon lost that guy and they still their offense has scored 40 points you know every week after week one And I think, Ted, what's interesting, what you just said there, uh, potential Heisman candidates, quarterbacks in the same conference, and it's not all about the SEC, about the quarterbacks or receivers or whomever that are in that same conversation that could be in the top five. I'm just kind of prognosticating as to how these last three games play out. Yeah, amen. And that that frustrates me, guys. And just a short background, I I – declined invitations to both of the Heisman for many years because, you know, you're, you're, you're in the pack. You don't see everybody around the country. 
but the bias against mm-hmm. athletes from the West was so intense. Yes. And it really crystallized to me when Toby Gerhardt didn't win it and then Andrew Luck didn't win it. Now, Andrew Luck lost to a couple of really, or finished second, I should say, to a couple of really good players. That's, that's not knocking them. But it was just such a bias against athletes from this part of the country that, that I jumped in. And, and that's where I absolutely think that the, you, know, you have to be, in my view, 25% better as a player out here to best the SEC player because the voters back there just – have basically determined it's the best SEC player, yep. often the best SEC quarterback is automatically your Heisman winner. I'm with you on that. Uh, when they, when Christian McCaffrey did not win, that's when you really knew that yeah. it was a heavy East Coast bias, Ted. Uh, here's my follow-up. We had a discussion earlier about Oregon and their loss to Georgia, and I presented the fact that even if the Ducks win out and win the Pac-12, and that's the only loss they have, that the voters or at least the, the committee will not put them in the first four for the playoff. Are, are you on that side, or do you think they will have an outside shot? I, I think the, the first vote guys this week gave Oregon the hope mm-hmm. okay. because sure. they, were, they, were the top, they were the top-ranked Pac-12 team. Now, if I'm USC, I'm sitting there going, wait a second. We've lost one game this year by one point at the end of the game on the home field of the defending conference champion, right? And Oregon is ranked ahead of us. So to me, if I'm an Oregon chair, that's hopeful. And again, they need help. I mean, somebody has to be Clemson. Somebody has to be TCU. Uh, or Ohio State, Michigan, somebody's going to likely lose that game. That will help. Um, and Oregon has to hope, in my view, Oregon has to hope that it's USC that they get a chance to play in the Pac-12 championship game, if those are the two schools that make it. Oregon's best chance to erase that 49-3 to would be to run the table and then beat USC mm-hmm. in the championship. Ted Robinson joining us here on Fox Sports 9, 10 Rockman with Jimmy B. Uh, here, just get your take on UCLA. They made their first appearance in the CFP uh, ranking since 2014. It's been a long time, and uh, I think a lot of Arizona State fans are hoping they can play spoiler this weekend. I uh, think uh, ASU maybe is make a little bit of a turn that could uh, give the Bruins some trouble. Yeah, I mean, it, look, look, it's, it's what Bourdain is doing there is unbelievable. I mean, that's just it's it's, yeah. it's the story that every college football fan, if you truly love college football, it's an awesome story to see Trenton Bourdain do what he's doing, to see what Barnes, the kid at Utah, did last week. You know, getting the starting nod 20 minutes before kick and winning on the road. Those you love those stories. I mean, those are. And I was there for Rudy, so I'm not going to compare it to Rudy. It's 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 a glorified version of a better version of the Rudy story. That's right. great, right. and we we love that. Um, so yeah, I mean, look, UCLA, their their run game has been terrific. Uh, that's Chip Kelly's mantra. I've known it. I think everybody sees it. He has a premier running back. It allows Dorian Thompson Robinson to to run and throw when they want to, not because they have to. And that's magic for an offense. Their defense got exposed once, and the question is, can they rebound? You know, can they make that a one-time deal only? You know, Oregon shredded them, uh, but Oregon has shredded everybody. So I think that's the caveat. Um, and what's and when we saw the CFP ranking, to me, that was strictly the fact UCLA played three home non-conference games against you know lesser opponents, and that that's all that was about. Um, and their hope, look, UCLA has it in their hands win the next two weeks, and then they get USC at the Rose Bowl. Yep, and yep. if they win that game, then they're in. They'll be in the championship game. So they you know, they have their fate in their hands. Speaking of fate in their hands, here's Utah. You'll be doing that Arizona-Utah game. When you watch Arizona, and I think you alluded to that a little bit earlier, Ted, is it's a completely different offense. I mean, they've come night and day from last year when Jed Fish took over. But it's all about the defense. It looked like, to me, they ran out of gas. Um, can they handle Utah all four quarters or – Will it be a uh, go up and down the field, shoot them up again yeah. with this U of A offense? Well, I, I, yeah, you know, I think that's a great question. I don't see any other way Arizona can win a game in November other than to outscore. Uh, they're just they're a completely one sided team. Their offense is excellent. The the pass get, those three receivers are terrific. And Singer, uh, the third guy, had it coming out last weekend. I mean, he, the, the, he was just spectacular. And that's that offense is legit. Um, and their defense is, is short. They're just short. And they, you know, Jed Fish knows it. They need to get 
two or three impact defensive players in next year. However, you know, whatever means they come into the school, that's what they need. And particularly up front there. And I've seen them three weeks in a row guys. And I don't think I've called their a defensive <laughs> lineman's name more than twice. They just, they're not, they don't make any impact in that part of the game and they need to. So Jed and Jed fish knows it's better than any, any of us know it. So yeah, their hope against Utah is that, you know, they can do to Utah's defense what USC did. USC scored 42 points in Salt Lake. Three minutes. Yes. Arizona is capable of doing that. Yeah. And then, then, then maybe if they, you know, a couple of breaks go your way, you win a game 45 to 41. But that's the way, if they're going to pull it off, that's the way they do it. I think the other game that's going to be very interesting, Ted, is the Oregon State, probably the quietest 6-2 and two team in the nation, uh, taking out Washington, also 6-2 and two there in Seattle. Uh, I think that Washington's favored by four or something like that. But anyways, um, just what Smith has done with that program, uh, are they on the precipice to finally breaking it all open and quietly maybe sneaking in the back door for the uh, Pac-12 championship? Yeah, uh, that's going to that's gonna be hard. I mean, they have their chance because they'll have Oregon in their rivalry game. Uh, that, 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 to make Vegas is going to be a big ask for them, and, and they are the other exception to me in the conference in that you know, the quarterback position is a question for them, and they're playing a, a second-year kid now. He played since the game in Utah, actually. Uh, but it's just not – they're not getting to play at that position that the other schools we're talking about are. Um, that having been said, what they've done is what Arizona is trying to do. Ar- Oregon State has turned the close calls and losing every game to, hey, we're winning some of those now. And that's – you know, every team Two minutes. on the way up, you have to make that turn. And that's where Arizona is now. They're in that we're losing by four to seven every week, playing even the good teams really tough. But we don't win any of them. Uh, Jonathan Smith has started to do that. Um, what I what I would tell you about this game tomorrow night, though, is the weather forecast up there is not very good, and it's supposed to be rain and wind. Ugh. And you know, Manuch, wind oh, is the, you yeah. know, that's the worst. <laughs> well, I'm saying Michael Michael Penix has been brilliant. Their yes. past game has been brilliant. Wind wind is the biggest disruptor to that. Sure. So if the weather is as forecast, that could be a that could be a, a boost for Oregon State. Ted, we know you uh, do a lot of hits, and we appreciate you always making time for us, man. Thank you. Appreciate it. Oh, no. Come on, guys. Anytime. Nice being with you. Thank Thanks. you.